back to grassroots this week on RPM as we visit Mondello Park. It may be Super Ace Sunday at the Kildare venue, but some very welcome guests have arrived in the form of the Fiat Unos and Puntos. Very much entry-level classes, they're capable of outshining some far more expensive machines in terms of entertainment value. RPM viewers are the Dunlop Fiat Punto of Art. Powered by an 1800cc engine and running on slick racing tyres, they certainly aren't cheap. They are, however, great fun to watch. Derek Graham and Joey Freeburn have met on the track on more than one occasion this year, but when they stay out of trouble, both have plenty of pace. While reigning champion Liam Denning is having a disappointing season, by his lofty standards, Gordon Kellett, Bob Copeland and series returnee Barry Rabbit are right there. Champion show jumper Eric Holstein has made a return to motorsport this year and has proved unbeatable in his HKS Murray Motorsport machine. Whilst chaos reigns all around him, Eric just canters home, often driving right around all the action, quite literally. Today it's business as usual as Eric takes win one from pole and climbs to seconds from six on the grid to shadow the unregistered Tar Leonard across the line and take maximum points yet again. His first championship on four wheels can't be too far away. Formula One designer Gordon Murray designed this amazing machine which is about as basic as you can get. And racing in Ireland doesn't come any more basic than the low-budget Fiat Uno class. €2,000 will buy you one of the little Fiats. They may not be the prettiest or the fastest in the land, but boy, are they fun. Normally when it's Fiat time on RPM, it's Dunlop Fiat Punto Abarth, but there are two far more accessible Fiats here at Mondello Park. Behind me is the entry level of Dunlop Fiat Uno. 1300cc, unburstable engine, Dunlop road tyres. For as little as €2,000, you can be on the grid. The Dunlop Fiat Uno Cup was introduced in 1993 and was the first Irish saloon series to enjoy manufacturer backing. Back then, the front runners included Michael Cullen, Steve Griffin, Michael Barable, and Roy McCain. Many other top Irish saloon racers have since used this class to cut their teeth, including Mark Turley, Liam Denning, and more recently Alpha Euro Cup frontrunner Owen Murray. The cars may be worth less now and the drivers perhaps a little less, less ambitious, but one thing certainly hasn't changed the action. These cars originally earned the nickname Vietnam, and watching them, it's easy to see why. Third place on the grid today is rally crosser turned tin top racer David Donahue in the BT racing car. Series leader Michael Fitzgerald is not on pole for once. What's his plan today? What's the plan? Is it all going to happen at the first corner? Uh, we try to avoid the instance at the first corner and end the race, but uh, you never know. It's very competitive out there, so we just got to keep the head down and go for it. Pole position for the first time this year goes to the immaculate car of Alistair Callan. Can he beat Fitzgerald? If they get ahead of Mick, I should be able to keep ahead of him, but uh, if, he, if he gets ahead of me, so it'll be a good race on here. And there's Alistair Kellett on the front row on pole position. A little bit unusual there, but from a very famous motor racing family, we're on board with Jamie Masterson and uh, the other in car, Hayley Rowley, young up and coming racer. The revs are rising here with these incredible Fiat Puntos. The lights are red, and uh, Mick Fitzgerald leading the championship outside of the front row. Looks across at pole sitter Alistair Kellett, and I'm sure he has plans for Alistair getting up to the first corner. The revs rise, and the wheels spin, and they're away. And a great start from pole man, Kellett there, he'll be doing well to keep this man Fitzgerald behind, unbeaten so far this year. Good move by Kellett there, late on the brakes, takes the place back, Fitzgerald was looking very threatening. Watch out for the yellow car there in third place, that's Alan Byrne, very experienced driver, just out for the day. Yeah, Alan Byrne, an expert in Fiat's, won the Dunlop Sexton Trophy in a Fiat and got the rules changed as a result. I think he's very, very proud of lots of gouging and banging down the back and uh, this is standard stuff in Fiat Uno racing. Meanwhile, up front, Alistair Kellett, great late-breaking manoeuvre at the first uh, corner because it looked as if uh, Mick Fitzgerald had got the advantage, but uh, Fitzgerald has slotted in behind him. Meanwhile, Byrne looks as if, he's, as if he's up the inside coming out of turn three. That's a trademark, a trademark Alan Byrne move there, great one out of turn three. He's on the wrong side for the S's though and Kellett actually slow 
slowing him down and stopping him going around the outside of Donahue. A little bit of contact there. Great stuff between these two at the first bit of the S's. Gary Cunningham going a bit wide. There's Des Johnson, Haley, Willie O'Brien, all the rest filing through. Yeah, and Fitzgerald is uh, squeezed. Uh, Alan Byrne out. He knows a wily old competitor to both of these, and they know all about uh, defending as well as attacking. And meanwhile, uh, Alistair Kellett at the end of the first slap, and oh, and Alan Byrne makes a great exit there from Dunlop Corner. He'll go the wide way, the long way down the outside, but it looks as if he might have a bit of a run on Mick Fitzgerald. Meanwhile, Fitzgerald is uh, pushing the leader, Alistair Kellett, down to the first corner, down the outside from Fitzgerald. Can he break a bit later this time? And Byrne doesn't need to be asked twice, straight up the inside, and that's what Fitzgerald was worried about. He pulled out back in, there's Byrne alongside now. Fitzgerald should have the line for turn two. A little bit of mutual respect there, they don't actually rub moving mirrors. Unusual for Fiorino, Stecklin. Yeah, all very clean, only a little bit of rubbing and banging, not very little. And not at that corner, in fairness. No, it's, it's all good, clean stuff. They know the moves, they know uh, exactly what's required in every given situation. And meanwhile, Adam Byrne, long way around, going down into it. It looks if Nick Fitzgerald has got up the inside on the way out of turn three. This, it, Alistair Kellett still has the inside going down to the S's but Mick Fitzgerald has the advantage, can he turn in, can he make it, round the outside in the S's, very very tough manoeuvre, two turns in by Mick Fitzgerald there a little bit of bumping and boring, has he still got the inside going through the second part, he has it looks as if he's made that one count, fantastic manoeuvre and watch for Byrne, he's coming through too and watching this from the curb cam and there it goes, Haley Rowley straight over the curb cam there in the style bars car but Alan Byrne now up the inside, takes second place so a disastrous two corners there for Kellett left the door open, looked like there was a gap, Fitzgerald straight down the inside, no contact, and now tacking onto the tail of the first three is the BT racing car of young Davy Donahue. David Donahue, a rallycross racer, and really uh, taking to the tracks, taking to the tarmac uh, with a plum. He's performing very well. He's tagged onto the back of this group. Kellett did say before the race that uh, if he got the lead away from the line, that he'd be able to hold them back. But it hasn't transpired, and looks as if Mick Fitzgerald has really been the pace. See him working at the wheel through there through turn two, and he's been incredibly uh, proficient this year so far, leading the championship. But let's see what the uh, interloper Alan Byrne can do about this. Byrne, of course, a newcomer to the well, a returnee to the series, far from a newcomer to Fiat's, and. Uh, he'll be putting it up to him. Meanwhile, Alistair Kellett looking at uh, defending now from David Dunhu and David Dunhu crawling all over him, heading down to the S's. And David Dunhu was thinking about a run round the outside of turn three and now he's thinking of a run round down outside the S's, really working over Alistair Kellett now, trying everywhere. No fear, this young man, and loves going sideways. Very much a front runner in the Stock Hatch Championship in the winter here at Mondello Park. This is a very different discipline, of course. You have to be a little bit smoother in a Fiat Uno, but it doesn't bother him. Out front now, the lap time's really falling. These two guys head to head, Michael Fitzgerald and Alan Byrne pulling away from these rounds of novices here's a uh, that looks like Moore there and then it's Jamie Masterson Gary Cunningham and then Hayley Rowley great car control being displayed these front wheel drive uh, Unos they might not have a lot of power but they take an awful lot of driving they're incredibly light there's a little bit of banging and boring there between it uh, looks as if David Dunn who's got a real run down the outside into turn one Kellett late on the brakes manages to hang on but he's really having his work cut out a little bit of uh, body work uh, damage there on David Dunn whose car a sign of just how close Fiat Uno racing is here at Mondello Kellett really having to work hard David Donahue on a charge now left right he goes to the outside again we saw him try this the last time right round the outside the first bit of turn three really brave manoeuvre these cars can be a little bit tail happy and he's managed to carry it off that's fantastic stuff Alistair's going to have to call around to Uncle Gordon and ask a little bit about defensive driving because you wouldn't see that happening to Gordon Keller well it was an incredible manoeuvre by David Donahue and maybe Alistair was a little bit after you Claude on that one but uh, you have to hand it to David Donahue he wasn't afraid of it and they, as you say the car goes light there and really there's very little very few signals coming up from the, from the uh, four wheel underneath you and it's a bit of a roller skate and it took great uh, great performance there by Donahue and meanwhile a little bit further back we're on board with uh, Jamie Maston Jamie now great young driver first season and there he goes down the outside of Emmett Moore into Dunlop corner and Moore turns in that's typical Fiat Uno racing there door handle the door handle no damage done fantastic move there by young Jamie Masterson we've seen this guy really impress us this year had pole position for his first ever race yeah, Jamie Masterson uh, immediately moved to the outside to confirm that uh, score that he'd made on uh, on Moore there and uh, down the inside into turn one. It looks as if he's made it uh, made it stick. And the car is still looking well despite the banging and boring it's been getting. Tony Waters crash repairs. He might need that on the end. There's Haley Rowley now in the style bars and Calzini's got under attack from Willie O'Brien. They hook up now on the exit of the first corner and around goes Haley. We can see it all from in car arms, legs, everything flying. Well, well that wasn't exactly polite. Haley Rowley, a newcomer to racing, but uh, no newcomer to Mondello, she's an instructor here at the Mondello Park track and uh, plenty of experience on this and she won't, will not be happy with that, that was uh, pretty unceremonious but uh, she's back and running and uh, will. Oh, and there's a little bit of uh, repeat on board. And that's Masterson just getting it there from, uh, looks like Moore just gave, he's just turned into the essence, the back end of the car is a little bit light and around he went, so two cars off in one lap and uh, meanwhile Fitzgerald back where he normally is, 
business as usual in the Fiat Uno Cup, unfortunately, because Michael Fitzgerald out in front. Yeah, the curse of the camera there for the midfield runners, but it is tougher. Uh, once here, you've got cars in front and cars behind. They can get a little bit of drama. No such drama for Mick Fitzgerald. All he has to concentrate on is the uh, track in front, and really, Alan Byrne doesn't look as if he can do anything about him. Byrne really pushing hard now, but it doesn't look like as Declan said anything he can do about him. He's closed the gap to a certain extent. The tyres get a little bit tired on the last few laps of these uh, Fiat Unos now, heading up the hill towards Dunlop. But Fitzgerald looks like he has that gap under control, really got the head down, put in some good line. Look at the lead these two experienced racers have over everybody else. Yeah, Mick Fitzgerald, a very controlled victory from the ex single seater racing man. Second place, uh, Alan Byrne, a saloon car racing expert of old, and a clenched fist salute there from, from Mick Fitzgerald pit crew. Another great win for him. Yet again, unbeaten in Fiat Unos. We thought it was going to happen today. I thought it was going to happen myself, that I was going to lose, but um, well, we kept at it and we had to make a, an early start and break for the front, and which we did, and turned out well, we kept our head down. And a great win there for Mick Fitzgerald from Alan Byrne with David Donahue third. Fitzgerald still leads can, in control. It's time to meet the middlemen and women of the Fiat hierarchy, the Punto Racers. The next step on the Fiat motorsport ladder is this, the Dunlop Punto 1400. Dunlop slick racing tyres, a 1400cc engine with a race camshaft, 120 brake horsepower, three seconds faster a lap than a Fiat Uno, and yours for €6,000. Step two on the Fiat Motorsport ladder is the 1400cc Punto class. Until the recent advent of the 1800cc Abarth, these machines were the quickest ever Fiat racers. More sophisticated than their Uno brothers, these cars are more similar to many UK one-make championships such as Clio's or Fiesta's. With more power and grip than a Nuno, they're a lot quicker around a lap, but the action, action tends to be much the same. Like their Abarth cousins, these Puntos tend to swap paint quite a bit. And wings, and door mirrors. Last year's 1400cc champion Derek Graham has already graduated the Abarth and is right on the pace, so the path of progression couldn't be any clearer. Today at Mondello Park, series frontrunner Jenny Ryan is in an unaccustomed third place on the grid. Let's see what she has to say. Weather's a bit changeable. Would it suit you if it's raining or would you prefer the dry? Um, it actually doesn't really bother me that much. Flash for dry doesn't bother me. Second, despite a year's layoff, is David Pratt. I think this too is, is dicing it out for the championship this year. So I raced to get him last year and we had a great battle between us. So it was nice to come back after 13 months and put it on the grid beside him. Completing a Carlo top three is the series leader, the unbeaten Richard Carney. Well, the Irish weather, who knows? All we can do is just either hope it's wet or dry and not in between. And there's your grid for 15 laps for this Punto 1400cc cup race and uh, rain on the windscreen so that'll be keeping their attention, it's definitely going to affect things out there but there's Richard Carney on pole position, very much the pace this year, very impressive from this uh, brightly orange coloured livery car and they're getting away, it's a good clean getaway, Jenny Ryan from the second row looks as if she's running close with uh, Richard Carney up front and David Pratt slots in and meanwhile the windscreen wipers are going there on Richard Carney's car and so it's obviously wet for him but for no one else. Carney getting away there and Pratt doing well to defend from the charging Jenny Ryan. He knows how quick she is. She wants to get up there and really have a go at Richard Carney. She thinks her first win isn't too far away. So it's Carney from Pratt, Jenny Ryan, Jenny McGreen Hall, Conroy, Pat McConnell, Aldo Marini, Kelly, and all the rest streaming through. Windscreen wipers going everywhere, and that'll, we'll just see them test the metal of drivers just as they test the grip going up into turn three. And Richard Carney maintains his lead just ahead of David Pratt. A little bit of uh, daylight emerging there between the first and second cars, and Jenny McGreen Hall in fourth place. Going well too. 
And there's the Choo Choo's car of uh, stalwart competitor there. That's Pat McConnell from Dundalk. Great to see him rejoining this series. Meanwhile, here comes Carney. Usually he's left the pack by the, the end of lap one. It's not happening today now. Very close to Carlo Trio. Head up on the brakes to Dunlop. Jenny closing in on these two on front. And we get some great onboard shots from the Dream Brides car later on. Yeah, Carney has an all. And that's a big, big slide there from Jenny McGree and Hall. She managed to gather it all up. She's lost a couple of places. She's back. She's lost three places by the looks of things. But she's uh, back and running and well held there. Great car control, but uh, just shows just how slippy it is and meanwhile David Pratt down the outside into turn one Richard Carney doesn't give him too much encouragement Jenny Ryan she wants to try and take that position from her near neighbour uh, David Pratt and meanwhile the first three cars running as one plenty of pace there from Jenny Ryan certainly able to hang on to these two and just as I say it there she drops back a little bit here we are on board third gear just let the engine ref doesn't bother grabbing fourth now in through the double apex little bit of lift back on the power there and already closing in on the back of the two litres that's a great shot from Jenny's car yeah very aggressive very committed it's uh, the fastest part of the circuit there in the the uh, fastest turn turning into turn three the first part of that section really difficult very technical and uh, requires a lot of bravery and meanwhile Jenny's up the inside of David Pratt at the Ezzes and she spins him around oh and, and then she gets tagged so it's disaster there for those two Carla runners well that's a terrible pity again if this was dry the back of that car might have twitched and come back into line but slicks and it's wet surface really hard to keep it in control and it's a break for Carney and there comes Pat McConnell now Conroy absolutely giving him no time like just squeezing him into the wall McConnell just had to come out of that one there out of Dunlop side by side great stuff typical Fiat racing and Aldo Marini just breezes by McConnell on the main straight well it's good news for Aldo Marini but uh, Ian Conroy definitely not giving that one away easily and uh, Pat McConnell might have a word of them after the race he's still fighting though he's still got it all to do and he's uh, catching up and uh, chasing up to Ian Conroy as they go through turn two I think that battle hasn't quite been resolved yet. Meanwhile, our, our Ian Conroy runs wide through turn two and that's given it up for uh, Pat McConnell. And that was actually Marini, but McConnell taking it back up now and yeah, waved yellows and the guy's trying to slow down. The car's all over the place. The back end of these cars just let go in wet conditions. Pat McConnell doing really well to hang on to that one there. It looks like Kelly's car on the outside, but as we said, when you lift off in these cars in wet conditions, they get totally sideways. Pat got back on the car held it beautifully here we are on board with Cook again the same place around goes Kelly that's what we spoke about Cook keeps in a straight line but catches the gravel with the back end around he goes there's McGreal Hall Paul Clark Simon Quinn everybody coming towards poor old Cook well cars off everywhere and yellow flags everywhere fantastic performance there by Pat McConnell and meanwhile up front Jenny McGreal Hall in the wars again David Pratt is off and uh, and I think inevitably the safety car has come out to try and regroup things because really these conditions incredibly difficult for these drivers on slick tyres remember and this track wetter than it looks on our camera shot and uh, that will just allow the uh, safety workers to uh, drag some of those cars out of the gravel trap and meanwhile what's happening here this is a, uh, a tactical decision NASCAR stuff from Sean Woods racing there's Brandon Hall they reckon if they can get a set of wets onto that car before the safety car comes around they can stay on the lead lap they will have the fastest car on circuit and they may get back up so uh, there's Jenny McGreal Hall looking competent and relaxed there and uh, Sean Woods racing they're just getting ready but it's not going to work out for them the safety car has come in early so unfortunately that plan is not going to work it could have been fantastic Unfortunately, she's lost the lap. A roll of the dice, it was worth it. Jenny had dropped quite a way back after those two spins. Uh, but it's uh, great to see a little bit of tactical uh, playing going on in Irish racing. And maybe we should introduce pit stops a bit more often. And meanwhile, the uh, the drivers are back out. It's still wet, it's still damp out there, so it's still going to be pretty difficult. Jenny McGreal Hall finally gets away. She's more than half a lap down, so it's very difficult. But really interesting to see what lap time she's doing. Meanwhile, two cars spearing off in the background. That looks like Paul Clark and Simon Quinn. We've seen them come together before in 1400 puntos. I'm sure there'll be words in the paddock after. Afterwards. Both cars look uh, relatively okay, then they're both heading back in the same direction. But meanwhile, it's Carney up front now in 1400 puntos. And it's Ian Conroy, a very spectacular, very aggressive driver in second place. Maybe he's the man that could take up the challenge as he closes in, locks the front brake, gets the car sideways back on the bar. These 1400cc puntos don't mind being hustled. You can push them on. Conroy's style didn't suit Unos. He never went well in Unos. All of a sudden, he's running right at the front of these cars. They don't mind being thrown around a little bit. Fabulous car control there by Ian Conroy. Fabulous confidence, and he really displayed his, uh, his ability behind the wheel there and he's still very much in contention. My, meanwhile Richard Carney has a little bit of thinking to do because uh, he's had the lead, he's had it since the start and he's had a big lead but now he's uh, he's got Ian Conroy who's letting it all hang out again at turn three right behind him. It's Pat McConnell now and Aldo Marini all over him so it's close stuff for third place and Pat McConnell now the experienced man uh, really going well in the Brendan Woods transport car. Of course we saw his daughter earlier in the Uno race so a great motorsport family there and uh, there's Aldo Marini getting sideways gets back on the power that's what you've got to do in these puntos and uh, just drag the car back straight again there's Pat O'Sullivan another newcomer going well but he's under pressure from the charging Jenny Ryan and she will not be in a mood to take prisoners today well this will be interesting because uh, remember uh, Jenny Ryan is gunning for championship honours and we'll see if she has uh, a stab going up to Dunlop Corner
corner at the end of this lap on the brakes in the wet and it looks as if she's going to make this one stick great performance there by Jenny Ryan and that's McGreal Hall up in front of the two Jennies now together on track one on slicks one on wets we'll keep an eye on that as the race progresses here comes Carney now again round turn two he really is stuck to the mirrors you can see him he knows he's got a bit of a madman behind him really is the young charger of the class Ian Conroy and watch out for him there goes Carney through the double apex and look at Conroy end of the rack like a Mark II escort through the first minute he waves yellows is he going to hold it McConnell follows him through He's up on the grass all over the place at 360 and it didn't work out that time. He's lost his second place. Is he going to lose third? He certainly is. The recovering McConnell comes through. So it's all action for the 1400 puntos yet again. Wow, well, stunning commitment there by Ian Conroy, but uh, discretion the better part of valour and it's uh, a noticeable really with the windscreen wiper still going in Jenny Ryan's car that uh, perhaps it is a lot drier than it has been and we'll see how that's affecting Jenny McGreal Hall and see what her times are like. Paul Clark now heading that group and here comes Conroy all on his own up the hill to Dunlop. Just turns the car into the second gear car and throws it a little bit sideways there an early celebration he's coming down now towards the checkered flag he'll be absolutely delighted with this one it's another win for the Michael Schumacher of Fiat Puntos unbeaten in 2004 another win for Carney Ian gave me a great run there in the beginning but um, I don't know I think he spun out the back somewhere I just I looked in my mirror one minute he was there I looked again he was gone and I blessed myself and stayed going even on the last corner he had a bit of a slide there was that just showboating or were you under pressure oh, we had to give it a, a slight handbrake when you have a gap like that so just to please the the crowd and the people around. So it's another win for Carney in 1400cc puntos and he increases his championship lead. Carney from Conroy and Jenny Ryan on 72 points.